Hey, I'm Joey Such. I hope you guys are doing fabulous today. I am going to put this out there and I actually never called a suicide hotline till today. 1-800-273-8255. Sorry, I sound like an infomercial right now. Call now so you can feel better today. I actually didn't really know that the number existed until an incredible artist named Logic came out with a song with the suicide hotline number. It is an incredibly moving song. I'll listen to it from time to time, or if, I'm, or if I am feeling sad and want to feel even sadder. Even if you haven't listened to it, I highly recommend it. I never call because I'm afraid of what may happen. I think I am in the same boat as a lot of people in that I want to feel better, but I don't want to get myself in worse of a situation. There will be stories of cops being called and put you in a psych ward or make the situation worse. You don't. You do not want an only you problem to turn into an everybody problem. When cops are called, it alerts your whole family, even though it may be a personal issue. It is a problem that you want to solve alone. If you wanted your family's help, you would go to them first, right? What I can do is research and help you guys be familiar with the process, or maybe you just want to know out of curiosity. I am not sure about you, but for me, the more information I know about a topic or idea or whatever it is, the more comfortable I am talking about it and doing something. Or, or, or maybe you don't want to type suicide or similar terms into Google in case you accidentally get hit by a bus and somebody sees your search history along with all the dirty stuff, you freaking weirdo. Oh my god, why did you look up? And dogs. For me, if I am going through serious or suicidal shit or feeling depressed, I am half and half in reaching out for help. It really depends the last time I talked with my best friend, if that makes sense. Like if we talking periodically throughout the day, then I will reach out. It also depends on what kind of mood I am in. I have only one friend who I can call and be in a safe bubble and not fear of being judged. Sometimes I just want to be quiet and alone. Otherwise, I would try to watch something to or listen to music or play a game on my iPhone and let the moment pass. Maybe I will get emotional or angry or cry or have panic attacks or shakes, but wait till I get back to normal. Could be a few minutes or a few hours. I have a best friend now that I can talk to, but still, she is going through her own shit with life and stuff and don't want to bring her down even though she would have no problem talking to me. I like lifting people, not bringing them down. I am still in the denial stage that I have her in my life and still have difficulty asking for help in times of need. I always had to be strong for myself and keep myself strong for everybody else. So it's the slow adjustment for me to have somebody there for you that you are completely comfortable with. Love ya. Enough about me, what is the number good for? According to their website, they provide 24-7 free and confidential support for people in distress, prevention and crisis resources for you or your loved ones, and best practices for professional. So you don't have to be suicidal. You could just be going through a really bad time, and even if you are surrounded by good friends, they may not know how to deal with the particular issue, so you need more professional help or advice. You could call on behalf of somebody else on how to help. It is in the wheelhouse to show what to say, a place to go if you need to go somewhere, or what to do. They just want to make sure you're okay and have the best information available. So I usually record with my phone, which is a much later version, and it's the one that I can only use to make phone calls, so I had to use a much older phone that I have. And so I'm sorry the quality is worse, but let's give them a call. One hundred. Two seven three eight two five five. You have reached the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, also servicing the Veterans Crisis Line. If you are in emotional distress or suicidal crisis, or concerned about someone who might be, we're here to help. Para español, o prima número dos. If you are a U.S. military veteran or current service member or are calling about one, please press 1 now to speak with the Veterans Crisis Line. Otherwise, please remain on the line while we route your call to the new...
So that was it. I'm not gonna lie, my heart is racing right now. I mean, I don't have any anxiety making calls like this, but like, if I wouldn't hide the stress situation, I don't know if I could call this number. I, I don't know, I'm, I was racing and I'm not in any distress. Then with the power of the system, they will connect you to the closest crisis center. If that center is busy, they will connect you to the next closest. The reason they want to connect you to the closest because those people are most familiar with the resources available in your state. No one an out of towner that has different vibes. Meeting a person from New York City is much different than meeting a person in Texas. Sometimes it helps to be more relatable to the person. According to the BuzzFeed article, and by the way, all the links are available in the description below, so you can read it at your own pace. So according to the article, they are able to answer 85% of calls within 30 seconds after the greeting and 97% within 75 seconds or less, which is pretty good. It may be longer depending on where you live, the amount of staff they have, and if it's around the holidays. Around the holidays are usually the times where help is needed the most. Sundays and Mondays are also the busiest days of the week. It does make me sad thinking a lot of people or are afraid or don't want to go to school or work. There was a Reddit post by user Where Is My Pickle who posted interesting tidbits and misunderstandings about the suicide hotline. It will inspire me to make this video. I will definitely have the link to their post below. The stuff I love about Reddit or the internet in general is that I can learn stuff that I probably would never learn from mingling with society. You can go from a cute dog to somebody getting hit by a bus, then back to another cute dog. Anyways, working at a suicide hotline center is such a niche job and not something you would say out loud in a regular conversation. This is just one person talking about their experiences and can vary from person to person. They have to go through a 12-week program to be certified to be able to take calls. Some centers are shorter than others and have different protocols and rules. They have to learn how to, be, to de-escalate an issue, ask the right question, if they are in immediate danger or just want to talk, they have to assess the situation where if the person is on high alert or just reaching out to talk. Most people who are suicidal are not actually wanting to kill themselves, but rather someone to listen to them and be comforted. Throughout the conversation or at the end of the phone call, they would ask four questions to assess your risk level. If you say yes, they will ask the next question. If you say no, they will stop asking you questions and say thank you for calling and ask to call again. Of course, everybody is different and need more time to talk. The four questions are, do you feel so bad today that you think about suicide? The next three are, do you have a plan for how you would do it? Have you set a time? And have you taken any steps to kill yourself? Depending on where you live, there may be a queue. Now, if you're in high distress, and need somebody to talk to immediately, the first you think of is that nobody cares. Let's be rational, even though it's probably hard in that moment. For one, you aren't alone. There are others that need help and comforting just like you. They see a cue on the screen and answer calls of whoever is next. A conversation can last five minutes or an hour, however long it takes to de-escalate the issue. It could also be how many people are working slash volunteering at that time too. Another misconception is that they talk from a script. The person said that every per case is different with different ways of how to help them. With their 12 weeks of training, I am sure they are told of things not to say and do say. You wouldn't want to tell a person to just deal with it or if somebody has it way worse than you. That is just awful. There are people like that in regular life and it's not cool. You want to go to another person to feel supported and heard, not have your problems minimized. Somebody would always have it worse than you, no matter what. So what? You have your own problems, your problems, and trying to get through it. If you drop your yoga on the floor and have a breakdown, there's definitely something more going on. Otherwise, just look at the pretend camera like you're on the office. Experience helps a lot in dealing with people. I have been in high distress situation myself. And I learned what I like or don't like of how to be comforted. 
everybody can take the classes, but it helps a lot to be the one that needs help and you wouldn't want others to feel the way they did for a minute longer. In the end, it comes down to if the person had compassion and empathy. I actually looked to be a volunteer and they asked if you had any experience with suicide. I am sure they want to know since experience helps and also wants to know if you will be able to handle the job. I looked into volunteering actually and I'm not sure if I can emotionally handle it because I care about people a lot and I'm afraid to bring home my job and will never know what happened with the person after we hung up. I kind of need that closure and be like in a few days and say, hey, are you feeling any better? You're just helping that person for the day and hopefully they will call back again for more help or get different help or coping methods or even deaths. Everybody has a slightly different way of being comforted. I like to be comforted, but I also like to be roasted too, weirdly enough. It basically comes down to getting attention and distracted from the main issue and being in a different place mentally. We all have negative thoughts about ourselves, but deep inside want to be happy and try to get through this somehow. Something to keep that negative energy at bay for a while. Of course I would assess the situation and act appropriately that would make them seem the most comfortable. I did a lot of research and watched other videos to understand and it's a weird paradox I found. The lead people who come out on the internet to talk about working as the suicide hotline seem great and really want to help. Now I'm sure there are others who don't care as much or don't see the person having a big enough problem and be rude and move on. I see a lot of comments saying that they had a negative experience and will never call again or the cops were called and their problem became 10 times worse. It could come down to the colleagues thinking they are in serious danger or, or trouble and need somebody to check on them. It could make the person never want to open up again and be hurt even longer and never get to heal. Also, people are more likely to post a bad experience but never good ones. You could have nine good reviews and one bad review and everybody will focus on the bad review. I want to promote the suicide hotline to, get, to go and get help but I don't want to make somebody be in a worse situation than they already are. I have never called and I don't think I ever will. I called and my heart was racing. I couldn't make that call if I was really in a high distress situation. Going to a therapist I think is a better ch choice since you are more in control of the situation. You know the therapist's name and face and office and can start an ongoing conversation. Calling a suicide hotline may help that one time but the chances of you calling back are high, so it's better to find a therapist when you're feeling better so they can better understand you. You wouldn't want to keep explaining yourself or repeating your story. I make steep and dark videos and they get exhausting to tell, so I need a cool down period. The suicide hotlines are there to help you get through the day. A therapist if you find a good one for many years to come and a good friend for life. I watched a video of a former suicide online operator named Brian Fickelstein and he told a moving story of his most profound experience. I will have a link in the description below. I highly recommend watching it, but he said something deep that stuck with me. He said, life is hard, but every once in a while there are the perfect life moments. And that's enough, because it has to be. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you later.